Okay, there's Maxwell's here. This time with a rigid 398 American made half inch. I would call this a precision or a heavy duty tubing bender. There is a difference between tubing or pipe bend or between tubing and like conduit or standard pipe benders is that tubing benders tend to maintain a more uniform diameter. They're not mandrel benders. It isn't perfect. A mandrel bender actually has something that has to be inserted like a rattlesnake tail. It's exactly what they look like uh, inside the tube. They're real specialized. A conduit bender is just an open end where you just put in a piece of pipe, take it, or conduit, and then bend it over. And as you bend something circular, here's our crude example. I don't have any copper tubing. But as you bend a tube, what ends up happening is it gets crimped and kinked. With conduit, it's not such a big deal because you're usually not bending 90 degrees or real steep. Usually it's, you know, 45 degrees or less, or excuse me, I should say 90 degrees or less. And so it's not so bad. You can still run conduit or wire through it. Mandrel bending is literally where you have a stuffer that goes inside the tube, physically preventing it from collapsing, which makes the material sometimes stretches a little bit more with those. This is for like airlines, water tubing, and that type of stuff. Rigid has been long known for their plumbing and tubing and pipe related tooling. And it is their name that was licensed for the rigid line of power tools and stuff at Home Depot. But part of that license was that rigid still produced all their legacy products under their legacy name. So this is a much nicer one. We have these big, thick, laminated steel catch. So the point of this is that when you put in the tube, this will come over and lock over the tube itself. Then you have this, and we have little stops here. That's what those little pins are for. And this, we'll, we'll show that in a second here. You really want to open this up, get it around the tube. And then the reason that this pin hits here is so that it will cause this arm to swing about the center line of the arc. So once you've got your tubing in there, if you want a 90 degree, you'll just take this and it draws it around actually pretty nicely. And then you can measure off an exact 90 degrees. Now, the advantage of this, this is what we call, or what I call, semi-mandrel. It's just the fact that you have two hemispheres supporting the tube so that it limits them. It's not true manual, but it doesn't allow it to flatten out and kink as badly as just a normal conduit bender or doing an open bend around something. Because you have both of these dies, or I guess they are dies, on both sides of the tube, and just kind of helps maintain its stability. And this is what you use for refrigeration and air and water and that type of stuff. And that's what's telling you here. It's a half inch outer diameter tubing, one and a half inch radius, which means it's three inches. If you do a 90 degree, that will be a three inch circle across there. And so that's the nice thing, you know, really premium automotive brake tubing benders are of this style. So anyway, a rudimentary explanation. And when you see one of these kind of oddball benders that has all these kind of mechanics on it, that's how it works, and they're actually pretty darn nice. They're about as good as you can really get without using a mandrel bender just because of the way it clamps on both sides of the tube and draws it across. And the sizes you'll find these in is the common tubing sizes in North America, which would be quarter inch, three eighths, half inch, three quarter inch, and one inch. It's just surprising how much these things scale. To go from, I've been trying to find the brass craft one I made a video about a little while ago. It's disappeared somewhere, which is similar to this. But what's surprising is when you double the diameter of the tubing, going from a quarter inch tool to quarter inch capacity tool to a half inch capacity tool, you actually end up with something that weighs four times as much. Doubling the diameter of the tubing means that you need a much, much bigger and much stronger tool. So that's why something that seems like uh, just simple half-inch copper tubing actually is a big tool with 18-inch handles. I'm not 
I don't know exactly how to explain the scale the, the best, but the purpose of this scale here, and it's called a gain scale, is so that you can determine how many inches of tubing it's going to take to go around a particular, whether it's 45 degrees or 90. But this scale is a, there to help you just make that determination so you can compensate for the length of the arc itself, which is also uh, <laughs> rather important to tell you the truth. Other than that, kind of has this odd, like, heavy beam on top. I guess that's just to help stabilize the tubing a little bit more. Um, pretty serious forge tool and kind of cool to pick up, especially one of these larger ones. And felt it was a nice time to revisit these type of sem semi-mandrel heavy-duty precision tubing benders. I mean, and obviously these can be used on any material that it can physically bend. I wouldn't try bending rebar or solid steel rod, but you can certainly bend aluminum tubing or even like you know, half-inch stainless steel tubing. It's just they're almost predominantly used for copper tubing. And anyway, <laughs> really appreciate everybody who's been watching. See you next time.